beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helena and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who put a drop of faith in my bucket and subscribed to me when I only have one video out. Um, it was really kind and all your comments were super motivating. So thank you and please keep leaving them. Uh, I originally tried filming this video in my garden and uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> trying again with the same setup that I used last time. Before I delve into what we're going to talk about today, I want to ask you a question. What do you think is the single most common mental health disorder in the UK? Are you surprised when I tell you that it isn't depression, it's actually anxiety? The most common mental health condition in the UK, standalone, is anxiety, at rates almost twofold that of depression. Today I'm going to be talking about dealing with stress and anxiety in the modern world, and why I think these rates might be so high. I want to paint for you a scenario. A young woman who goes to work in an office every day on the tube. She worries about her deadlines, she worries about going to dinner with her boyfriend's parents, she worries about the number of emails in her inbox that she's got to deal with when she gets to work, she worries about how her boss and other people perceive her. This is all despite the fact that she's very capable of meeting her deadlines, capable of replying to all the messages in her inbox. She's employed by someone who obviously values her, otherwise she wouldn't be in their company. And the fact that she's going to dinner with people who love her and care about her. The cord that's running through her life is worrying. Is this because she thinks too much? Is it because she's a negative Nancy? No. She is the victim of her own biology. Today I'm going to teach you the neuroscience you need to know in order to decrease your levels of worry and anxiety around everyday things that aren't harmful to you and aren't useful to worry about. So where do we begin? We begin with the ancient brain. The brain has evolved over millions and millions of years. It's a staggeringly complex machine and we're only just scratching the surface of our understanding of how the brain works. Over all the years that our brain has been evolving, it has retained some areas very, very deep in the brain that are hardwired for survival. And today I'm going to talk about one part in particular which is called the amygdala. And this is the part of the brain that responds to fearful and threatening stimuli. Now the amygdala doesn't think, so it reacts and it tells you that you're, you're scared and, and induces fear feelings in you, even when you might not be in actual danger. So what happens then? The stress response kicks in. Your amygdala activates the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus sends messages to the body, and your adrenals release um, your stress hormones. And those are cortisol, noradrenaline, and adrenaline. And they start circulating in the body. Your heart rate starts to beat a little bit faster, you breathe a little bit quicker, and your hearing and sight sharpen. This stress response is designed for immediate danger in your surroundings. So it prepares you for fight, flight, or at last resort, freeze. Our ancestors were exposed to so many more dangers than we are today. Things like dangerous landscapes, um, not finding shelter, animals predating them, and other humans posing a big threat. But today we live much safer lives. We have physical safety, we have shelter, we have the legal and law enforcement systems that protect us from day to day. Despite all of this, our brains are still scanning for danger. And we have this thing called a negativity bias to danger. And what that really means is that even when everything around you is going really well, your brain is looking for the things that are not right. As an example, I want you to imagine that it's your birthday, you're having a great outdoor birthday party, all your friends are there, you're having a fantastic time. And all of a sudden, <laughs> a massive nasty looking hornet flies along and what happens? Every single person in the party drops what they're doing and moves away and freaks out because of this massive hornet, massive stinger. So despite the delicious birthday cake, despite the splendid company, and despite those comfy, comfy, comfy um, outdoor chairs that everyone is sitting on, where does their attention go? It goes to the threat. It goes to the threat and it prioritises the threat over all the other things in the environment that are actually positive. But what does that mean for when we're going through our daily lives and we're scanning for threats in, a, in an environment that actually isn't very harmful to us? 
it means that we end up responding to stuff that isn't actually posing any physical danger. Things like time restraints, deadlines, work schedules, difficult people, difficult relationships, financial issues. And we're responding to all these kind of things with a stress response that's designed to let you run away from things that are in the immediate environment and that are really harmful, things like rattlesnakes or tigers. So what happens when we have things like deadlines that are way in the future or taxes or financial difficulties and those things can't be dealt with in the short term? We end up with these high levels of circulating stress hormones. Over prolonged periods of time, these are really detrimental to our health and can actually increase our susceptibility to many different health conditions. And that's not to mention the mental turmoil of being unable to escape all the things that you're dreading. Now I'm going to teach you how you can take back your sense of calm using some neuroscientific tips and basically using techniques to bolster you against the stress response that isn't always useful. First things first, when you start to feel worried, stressed, anxious about something, ask yourself this question, is my anxiety warranted? Am I in physical harm's way? Am I in danger? And remember, this is because the amygdala is reactive. It's a reactive part of the brain that says, something is dangerous, let's be scared. It doesn't think through whether or not that is a real potential threat. So you have to do the thinking for your brain. <laughs> for example, when I get test anxiety, I, I definitely get that stress response. I get that kind of heart beating fast, kind of like a little bit clammy, um, feeling a bit tense. And the way that I bring myself down from that is to ask myself, am I in any real danger? And I know that even though I'm going into a situation where it's tough and, and it's, it means something, I'm actually in a safe environment. And even when I'm in the exam room, no danger should actually come to my physical being. The next thing is to use gratitude. So as I said, our brain has that negativity bias where it's always looking for the things around us that are bad, and dangerous. Draw your attention to all of those things that are going right. Draw your attention to the good news stories over the bad news stories. There's a saying that where your attention goes, grows. And I'm not sure if that's grammatically correct, but it really establishes my point well. I'm going to use the analogy of your brain as a garden. So if your brain is the garden and your attention is water and you have two patches in the garden, one is flowers and one is weeds. And your attention can water the weeds and these will grow. Or your attention can water the flowers and these will grow get a certain amount of water in the day so if you always water your flowers you'll have a beautiful garden full of positive thoughts positive things and if you water the negative thoughts the weeds then you'll have all the weeds growing and they will completely obscure your view of the flowers use this to retrain your brain tell your brain that yeah i might have a deadline but i'm safe until then and i know i'll make it what about in the situation where your stress response is actually warranted. Say for example, you're doing public speaking or you're putting out your first YouTube video like I was last week. Channel your energy into what you're doing and you can actually view it as a positive thing. So you can say, okay, I'm getting a bit stressed here and I can feel it, but that stress is helping me to rise to this challenge that I've got in front of me. So if it is public speaking or you're about to run a race or something like that, channel that energy into the thing at hand and use it as excitement use it as fuel. Other ways that you can combat stress in the long term is to do exercise. Exercise really helps to relieve the muscle tension that you might get when you're feeling stressed and not to mention it releases endorphins and lots of cascades in the brain that can help with things like attention and memory cognition. So exercise. Like I said because your brain is always looking for things that are negative. Something that is very um, negative at the moment and that's attra attra attracting lots of our attention are Big news headlines, you know the ones I mean, the ones that are scary, they're in caps, they're about death, they're about people being sick. And I know that this is of course a reality, but be really aware that your brain is always looking for negative things. Your brain is always going to bring those to the forefront of your mind and tell you that you should be scared and you should worry. If you are watching this video and at current you are safe at home, remember those blessings and take the appropriate action. So live after yourself, make sure you practice social distancing and encourage others to do the same as well. So that concludes this video. It was kind of a whistle stop tour of um, the ancient brain and modern day um, stresses. 
but I definitely have a lot more to say on this topic. It's not just our stress systems that aren't adapted to modern day life. If you want to hear more about that, please give me a thumbs up. And if you found this video useful, and if you learned something new, please share my video with someone who you think is a warrior who could do with some tips on how to deal with their stress in the modern world. If you really enjoyed this video, please subscribe as well. I am just getting started here and it's so wonderful to see all of your sweet comments and it's such a motivation that people are actually watching what I'm putting out into the world. So thank you so, so much for your time and I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay home, stay safe and stay positive and I will see you next time.